Hey everyone, welcome back. A ton of people commented on my last video that they wanted a video on the resume that got me into Google and any tips or advice that I could offer related to that. And some people were actually pretty aggressive about wanting it. I also do want to get back to creating interview prep videos, but I've just been really busy lately. To be honest, the Google work-life balance isn't all it's cracked up to be, at least in my case. Maybe I'll make a video on that. Let me know if you want it. I do think that making these types of videos are helpful, but definitely let me know if you agree or disagree. Also, I recently tested positive for COVID, so sorry if I sound a little bit different. I honestly blame the ending of work from home because usually the only time I go outside is when I'm going into the office, but that's okay. And I'm actually gonna be sharing two resumes with you. One of them is the first one that got me an interview at Google. This was in 2019, back when I was still in college actually. I talked about it in an earlier video. I made it all the way to the onsite. I thought I had a chance, but ultimately I didn't pass. I'm also gonna share with you the resume that I used to apply two years later, and ultimately I was successful on the onsite and got a job. Spoiler alert, both of the resumes are very similar, because as you may know, I was unemployed during that time period. By the way, the link to both of these is gonna be in the description if you wanna check it out or use it as a template. To be honest, I don't think they're super impressive resumes, but you know, if you, if you do want it, it's there for you. So obviously I've anonymized this. This isn't my real name. This is definitely not my email, but the general content is still there. You can see that I had some general information about me at the top, my GitHub link. And I also had my education section very much at the top. Now people will generally say that having your experience at the top is the single most important thing. And I kind of agree. If you have a few years of industry experience, people care a lot more about your work experience than they do about your education. But since I was still in college, I thought having this at the top would be a better idea, and it's pretty short anyway. I feel like at the very least, people will read the first half of your resume, and if they do that, they will eventually see my experience. I went to a pretty average university in the US. I studied uh, computer science, and I graduated in late 2019. Now, this resume was created before I graduated, so I put my expected graduation date here, and I assumed that whoever screened my resume knew that, unless they think I'm from the future or something. <laughs> Uh, I did have my GPA on there. This didn't include like the last semester of college for me, which is a good thing because you'll see in my second resume, my GPA did dip a little bit, but I think 3.9 is very, very good. I think there's a point of diminishing returns with GPA. I think if you can have it like, you know, 3.5 or above, you're probably in good standing especially if you go to like a more impressive university, which I didn't. So I thought that having a good GPA kind of made up for that, but who knows? The good thing about tech interviews is that the school that you went to is not gonna prevent you from getting a job at a big tech company. And the same cannot be said for a lot of different industries like accounting and law and stuff like that. Now for my actual experience, you can see that I really didn't have a lot. I only had a single internship. That wasn't my plan. When I went into college, I was a very try hard student. I thought, okay, I'm gonna get at least two internships I'm going to do a bunch of projects, join a bunch of clubs, practice a ton for interviews, and then I'm going to get a job at Google or Microsoft or something like that. That really didn't pan out. And part of it was my fault. I wasn't super motivated in college, even though I had a good GPA. I probably should have spent more time getting uh, actual experience. But I did get one internship, and I was probably lucky to get this internship because Capital One is a pretty good company. I'm surprised that they even gave me an offer when I didn't have any other internship experience. I probably got lucky in that regard. And I really did my best to sound like I knew what I was doing. But going back and reading through some of this, it seems very verbose and definitely looks like it was written by a college student. The internship itself was actually about 10 weeks long. And to be honest, it wasn't a great experience. The first three weeks of that internship, I didn't even have a project assigned to me, which really wasn't my fault at all, but it definitely made the internship a bit less enjoyable. I enjoyed working with the people that I did, but I feel like they didn't take the internship very seriously. They kind of just ignored me a lot of the time. And I'm pretty sure they didn't use the project I created at all, which might be pretty common for internships. You can see that I basically modernized an existing feature. It was mostly UI work. And I also mentioned that I migrated some data to the cloud. By cloud, I mean AWS. As you can see, I mentioned that below. Now, it's this is definitely not as impressive as it sounds. I did do a redesign of the UI and I did migrate some data to the cloud, but it was a very small subset of data and nobody was using it in production. It was literally just like a demo application of what could be possible. Possible. I added a feature and I kind of talk about the impact of that feature, but it's not very clear and this is probably not super impressive, but I really did the best that I could. The tech that I worked on was AWS. I also uh, did Angular for the UI. I did do some unit testing. 
the data migration took place on AWS DynamoDB, which might sound impressive to like a recruiter or something, but to be honest, DynamoDB is super easy to use. And like I said, this was not used in production at all. I talked about how I leveraged Docker to containerize the front end and API to allow for easy deployment and scalability, when the reality is that I tried to do that, but I ultimately could not because of the way that the project was set up. This wasn't even like an intended thing. The person helping me with the project thought it would be really easy to do, but it wasn't, and I asked them for help and they couldn't do it either. So we kind of just gave up. Like I said, the people I was working with really didn't care about the internship at all, but I tried to make the best I could out of it. I did have a little bit of other job experience. You can see down below, I was a math teaching assistant at my university. This was for about like five months. Now, this is definitely not as good as like software engineering experience, but it does show that maybe I have some decent communication skills. That said, I probably should have gotten a job as a computer science teaching assistant, probably would have been a little bit better. But I don't think this was bad. It's definitely better than nothing. There wasn't a ton to write about this because mostly I just tutored people. You know, I say I emphasized conceptual understanding of topics, which is kind of what I do on the Neat Code channel when it comes to data structures. But yeah, I, looking back, I probably could have worded this a little bit better. Now for the project section, and I'm just gonna be completely honest, all of these projects were school projects. I'm not the type of try hard person who's gonna go out and make personal projects just for their resume. I probably should have done that, but I didn't. And I'm not the type of person who usually enjoys making uh, personal projects, which I definitely regret doing because now it kind of is an enjoyable thing for me depending on what kind of project you do, because you really can have a lot of impact. For example, I created neatcode.io, which definitely had a ton of impact so far. And it was pretty fun to create that actually. But for these projects, I just put down school projects. You can see that the first one was basically a Yelp clone. I just talked about the tech stack that I used, which was pretty modern actually. And I didn't write anywhere on here that this was a school project because I'm not really required to put that. So why should I? I tried to make this sound as impressive as I could. I wrote a node script that just parsed a bunch of JSON data. It was really nested. It was like 500 businesses. It was like a publicly available data set. And then I inserted that into Postgres. I wrote some queries and I developed a dynamic uh, UI using the React framework. So this was kind of a standard full stack project that you would expect of a college student and probably the most impressive project on my resume. I did more for this project than I actually did at my internship, which is kind of hilarious, even though my internship probably looks more impressive. I think that's kind of dumb, but that's the world that we live in. This second one was also a school project. It was kind of just a story, it mo more like a social media type application, but it had very limited functionality. I used Flask as the backend and I used jQuery in the UI. This was what they were teaching me at my university. It was basically users can add and interact with, you know, content on the homepage and changes to the UI would be implemented using jQuery. I thought that sounded impressive, but looking back, it just seems pretty generic. But most of the time it's recruiters reading this and maybe they're just looking for keywords like jQuery or Flask. I implemented a REST API using Flask and SQL Alchemy for storage of posts. To be honest, I don't even remember what SQL Alchemy is. All I know is at the time, I didn't even know what SQL was, and this abstracts a lot of SQL for you. So it was pretty easy to make this project. I also uh, made like a platformer game, also part of a college course. I used C++ for that and SFML as like the graphics library. So this was actually a challenging project to do. And it was honestly the most fun out of all the ones that I've listed here. Like creating just a random CRUD app, to be honest, isn't that enjoyable for me. But creating something like this, where there was a lot of like physics and hit detection logic and things like that uh, was actually really fun. And I really enjoy using C++, even though it's kind of painful. It was like the first object oriented language I learned at my university. And that's pretty much what I had for the projects. The last thing I had on my resume was my skills. I feel like this is kind of just a section that you can use to include a bunch of keywords. Like you can see here, I put C, C++, Java, HTML, JavaScript, and Python. Now I definitely did use all of these languages, but think about it. How proficient was I at all of these languages? Definitely not much. I listed them in order of what I was most good at. At my university, we mostly use C and C++, so that's what I listed first. I used some Java. I definitely used some HTML and CSS and some JavaScript. At the time, Python was probably my worst language language, but I just put it on there anyway, because I did use it in a project above. I also put down some technologies. I probably shouldn't have put the Dynamo DB here. And to be honest, looking back, I'm still not sure what I should put in the skills section, because I think if an engineer was looking at this, they really wouldn't care about this. 
they probably would care more about the projects and the work experience. But at the same time, if a recruiter is looking at this, or if this is going through some automated software looking for keywords, doing this is not a bad idea. But so that's it for the first resume I used to apply at Google. I ultimately didn't pass and then I was unemployed for a while. And then I applied again using my resume from 2021. Like I said, this is very similar to the first resume. You can see my GPA actually dipped a little bit because during the last semester of my college, I really didn't put a ton of effort into school. I mostly focused on interview prep, which didn't pay off, but that's okay. But I think this is still a pretty high GPA and I was able to get a Google interview with this resume. And you can see that I revised the internship section a little bit. Here I say I didn't actually migrate the data to the cloud. I prototyped a solution for that. I think that sounded a bit more realistic. I think I also removed a bit about the Docker containerization. But other than that, this is pretty much exactly the same. I did get a return offer to Capital One actually, but I didn't accept it and the deadline ran out while I was doing my other interviews for Google during 2019. So that's the reason why I didn't uh, return back to Capital One. Also really quick, you can see, I, I think I just cut down one line from the math teaching assistant position. I did have a few new projects actually. On the bottom, you can see I did still have the Yelp clone. I think I just revised the description for this, uh, but I had two new projects. The first one was a school project, but I didn't put that here. So this was a senior design project from my university, but I didn't include that in the description because I thought that would make it sound more impressive. Basically, we used Electron and React to create a desktop app that was supposed to be a math equation solver. We definitely didn't finish that, but I did have some solid contributions that I talked about. I used AWS Amplify and Cognito to implement authentication. I had high unit test coverage for our React client. Uh, but the next project was actually a personal project that I did when I was unemployed. So I basically created an application which tracked the top mentioned stocks on Reddit. I did this with Angular, Spring Boot, and GCP as the cloud platform. I created this application basically by scraping Reddit pages. I think there's like an open source library that allows you to do this. And I just stored the data in like a MongoDB instance. I created a UI and I deployed this uh, using Docker. Uh, and Cloud Run, which was actually super easy to do. This was actually during like the Reddit Wall Street Bets hype phase. But overall, it was actually a pretty fun project to do. I think I revised this bottom section a little bit, but for the most part, it's very similar. It's mainly just to kind of include some keywords and stuff like that. And this is actually my most up-to-date resume. I haven't created one since then, but nowadays I feel like just having Google on my resume would probably get me enough interviews lined up that I wouldn't have to like put a ton of effort into this. Also, I could probably put like the neat code site and the YouTube channel on my resume. That might be impressive, but I think I probably wouldn't do that because I honestly just like kind of having my own privacy, at least for the time being. Maybe I'll reveal myself at some point in the future, who knows? And I do want to mention that even though these resumes got me an interview at Google, they weren't like the deciding factor or anything. Like the resume, at least in the Google interview process, is only relevant for the initial screening, which I'm pretty sure happens by like a recruiter or somebody like that and then you get your interview scheduled, usually the interviewer doesn't really care that much about your resume, and it doesn't come up again until you pass your on-site interview and get into a different portion of the Google interview phase, which is called the team matching phase. Your resume is definitely relevant for that portion. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.